welcome back to the first mailbag monday of 2020 wow 2020 that's going to take some getting used to paired with today's fine assortment of uh, of openables we have grandpa's sweater oatmeal stout from barnhammer brewing right here in winnipeg you've seen this one before i know i've enjoyed it before yep that's just as good as it's ever been so first thing in we have expansion board module cutting gingerly with ye old scalpel where's hmm. more surgery a kit woohoo oh I think I recognize this one oh it's pretty obvious what it is LM317, that is an adjustable uh, regulator. And there are four diodes and a couple of big capacitors. This is a power supply kit. And I think this is the power supply kit that uh, a few other YouTubers have challenged each other and ultimately me and probably other people too, to a speed build competition. I, uh... Not sure how I feel about doing a speed build. Um, I usually take my time, do everything half-assed, and then do it over again and take more time. But uh, well, we'll see. I, I may do that uh, speed build challenge sometime in the near future. LM317 DC 5 volt to 35 volt 2 1.25 to 30 volt step down DIY kit AC DC power supply module. I happened to buy this one from CZB6721960. Another one of those awesome uh, names that rolls off the tongue. Um, I paid $2.73 for it, just like what they're selling it for now. And they're charging $0.84 cents shipping. I have a feeling that that's what the change in the listing was because I usually go hunting for something that doesn't have shipping just on general principle. Anyway, this uh, this kit, it's got yeah, a handful of components, a uh, couple of cap, the LM317 itself, big heat sink, pot for adjusting the voltage, some diodes for uh, bridge rectifier on the input, not sure what this transistor is doing. On off switch. Speaker terminals as an output. That's not ideal, but whatever. And then an assortment of capacitors and resistors and stuff. That should be uh should be interesting. Next in we have two times modules. There's one. There's the other. They look like they're both the same. Oh, and they've got little tear notches which don't work all that well. Those look like power supplies too. <laughs> Those look like used power supplies. Or at least reclaimed from something. That's interesting. So there is a live and a neutral it says. And over here we have plus 5 volts and return. Huh. Same thing here. Wires chopped off from whatever previous use these things were put to. And they're not the same. I mean, they're similar. But uh, parts placements are different. You notice the uh, MOV here is... Even the board is different. Huh. Uh, this one's got one big cap. This one's got a uh, smaller cap on it. The transformers look different different brand of caps over there i assume they're going to both do the same job if they work at all five volt two amp ac dc switching power supply module 2000 milliamp for repair slash replace uh got this from top electronic 1980 no shipping and uh yeah that looks similar to one of the two that i got um he said the other one has a slightly different configuration on the board. 
but obviously they are both the same thing, just a different version, different revision level. Condition, a brand new, unused, unopened, undamaged item in its original packaging. Um, yeah, not convinced. They might, they might be overstock that were pulled out of something. They might be unused, who knows, but I don't think they're in their original packaging. But yeah, that description matches over voltage, over current, and short circuit protection. Yes, that's nice to see. 5 volts, 2 amps, uh, any input voltage uh, from you know, 100 to 240 volts, 50, 60 hertz, so universal. Okay, I think I should spark one of these things up, or maybe both of them. Uh, maybe not spark them up, fire them up. See if they actually work. Okay, uh, here is a quick and dirty test setup. The module, I've just soldered a cord onto it. After desoldering the input leads that were already there, I've got uh, about 5 ohms uh, of high wattage resistor here. So that's an amp load on a 5 volt supply, assuming it is 5 volts. Connected to that, DC volt output there. Click. Ah, probably should plug the power bar in. Oh, yeah. Try again. Click. Oh, there we go. 4.3. Okay. Not perfectly ideal. Why is it negative? Ah, because I'm hooked up backwards. Okay. What does it look like without the load on it? Straight up 5 volts. So it sags by like three quarters of a volt with half of its rated output. Maybe these wires are hurting it a little bit. I don't know. Oh well, for under two bucks each, I guess I can't complain too much. That'll still power something, I'm sure. I'll have to, at some point I'll have to uh, check the two of them and just find out how stable they are and everything else what's next um one times modules got a thing from lee shop it's a power supply <laughs> okay um it's exactly the same power supply as at least one of those other two ones Let's see where I got this one from. So I can't find this one. It came from an auction though. Um, and I paid uh, about a buck uh, 30 for it. So, and I'm guessing that, uh, that I bought the other ones before I spotted this one at auction. So whatever, uh, we already know what it is. Don't have to go too far down this rabbit hole. Uh, next thing we have Five Chinese character, 20 Chinese character, yeah, something. Oh, hey, it's a couple of bagfuls of tactile switches with button caps. Let's take a closer look at these guys. Wow. Okay, and I think these are the breadboard friendly tactile switches too, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they are. Perfect. Well, that's good. Um, I probably ordered these in the wake of when I was doing that little 555 piano kind of circuit, and I realized that I didn't have enough breadboard-friendly buttons. Well, now I do, and with a rainbow of colored caps. So we got two, two bagfuls. 20 in each bag, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to run out of these anytime soon now. 20 pieces, new B3F tactile switch, key button switch, 12 by 12 by 7.3 millimeters, BTBD, whatever that means. I got these ones from, uh, another one of these names, 9CN7748. Free shipping. Currently, they're selling 20 of them for 250 I got two packages of 20 for a total of 353. 
So that's what happened up here. They've updated the thing and made it more expensive. But as always, I'll look around. I'll link to this one. Um, you might be able to find something cheaper if you're looking for the same thing. And number five, one times modules. Again, with the Lee Shop and, ah. It's a power supply. Do you see a theme today? This one though is, I think a DC to DC. Two potentiometers, which is probably one's constant voltage, one's constant current. I think maybe kinda. Uh, based on an LM2596H. HVS. Well, we'll go and check, uh, see if I can figure out what I bought here. DC to DC LM2596 voltage CCCV step down buck HVS 60 volt 3 amp constant current module from Top Electronic 1980. Uh, currently selling for 244. I got this at auction for dollar 39 Canadian, which is just over a buck American. Uh, free shipping, of course. Input voltage, 5 to 57 volts. Must be 2 volts higher than the output. Output current rated between 2.5 to 3 amps max. With the you know, 3 amps of the heat sink, 2.5 without. And this one doesn't have a heat sink. Output voltage, 1.25 to 30 volts adjustable. Uh, constant current uh, can be set between 0.2 and 3 amps. And the LED on it is the constant current indicator. Okay, well that could be uh, handy for driving a high-powered LED or something um, in constant current mode, or really any kind of constant con or any kind of uh, just general buck converter use. I don't even need to use the constant current mode, especially for you know under a buck and a half uh, at auction. That's a pretty good deal. Well, that was fairly uh, power supply oriented. So I think I'll also open up uh, this little mini screwdriver that I picked up at a dollar store recently. It's the baby brother of this one, which is kind of cool. I don't know how useful it'll be, but you can never have too many screwdrivers around. That doesn't want to get out. Okay. So it's got a little spot in there for storing the tips. It's a cute little keychain, and it comes with a medium Phillips, a small Phillips, and a small slotted or straight blade. There is a magnet in there, a relatively strong magnet even. Let's just see if that, sl yeah, that slotted one fits into there, that Phillips fits into there. That'll be handy. Um, I mean, it's, it'll be an okay addition to the, uh, to the ones that I've already got. Normally I keep, uh, the sort of medium sized Phillips and a wider straight blade in there. So I can keep maybe that smaller one in that and just keep it off to the side. Add those two to the collection. Let's stash them in there. I don't know. I think I'll keep it around here for now. I may not, uh. I mean, it use its keyching ability. I might even take that off. I'm not sure yet. We shall see. But for now, it will earn its spot just off to the left with the other little screwdrivers. Alrighty, there is the contents of today's Mailbag Monday. Not nearly as assorted as my usual assortment. Um, but if you're a fan of power supplies, this is the video for you. So, you know, tactile switches took a month to get here. The kit took four weeks as well. Um, one of these, the one that came by itself, I don't know which one it is, took three weeks. Um, this guy took two and a half weeks. And the two kits that came together also took three weeks. So what's my one and a half up to four weeks? Okay. Well, um... I'll be doing this speed build sometime up in the uh, coming weeks, I think. I'm a little scared of doing a speed build. Like I said, I don't usually... I just usually take my time and enjoy doing a casual build. Um, I'm not sure about that. I'm a little nervous about uh, about uh, doing a speed run. We'll see. Um, 
these power supplies, well, you can never have too many power supplies. And of course, those buttons are going to show up on breadboards in various demonstrations at some point in the future. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks, as always, to my Patreon supporters for, uh, for helping me fund this silliness and buying me a beer now and again. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions or comments down below, if you have any ideas about these things, do you think they are uh, used and pulled out, or are they just uh, pulled off and uh, pulled off the uh, line when they hit a surplus or something? I don't know. Um, I'm not super impressed with the specs on this one. Well, with the actual test on them. I'll test all three of them at some point. Anyway, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. I will talk to you later. Last minute addendum. This is exciting. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, if all you guys know, but, uh, I recently got a post office box, a nice anonymous post office box for my channel so that, uh, I wouldn't have to, uh, risk giving out my home address. Uh, and I got the first package in that. Very cool. This one came from Germany which is pretty interesting. I wasn't not that I wasn't expecting it. Nobody sent me an email or anything. So I think I'd just add this on to my, uh, to my mailbag here. Uh, it says it's resistors, uh, 10 pounds or no, 10, and it's not even 10 pounds. I was, I'm always a little bit surprised when I see people offering to send me something. Oh, there's a note. Let's see what we got here. Uh, that is just a sticker. Oh, and it says what it is. Okay. We're just, Put that away and uh, pretend we're surprised. Is there anything else in there? No, nothing else saying anything about this. So we'll just open it up and see what what's going on. Ooh, looks like either Canada Post or Deutsche Bundy Post uh, did a bit of a squishy crush number on this thing. So it is a soldering iron stand. I mean, the mailbag, the regular mailbag stuff, I know what I'm, I sort of know what I've ordered, so it's not the biggest surprise sometimes, although sometimes I forget, but okay, so, <laughs> all right, so it's an iron stand, and it doesn't quite fit that style of iron, just grab a different iron here, the Weller, it'll hold that. I mean, it holds it. This, this one fits in there. Okay. It's just not the absolutely best fit in the world. Cause it's not the exact one that's designed for. Okay. Uh, so this one is for the T12 or 951, 942 series, um, type of iron. Okay. So there's three different types for different, uh, basically different iron types. But I think I can make this work. This is awesome. What else have I got around here for irons? Oh, how about the little USB iron? That fits pretty, uh, well, it's a little loose, but not, uh, not bad, not uh, unacceptable. And it comes with a sponge. Thank you. I prefer the sponge, but it also comes with some of this stuff. And it looks, judging by that, this stuff lives in its little cave in there. Yeah, and then you can just, you can give it a wipe to get the worst stuff off. You can give it a scrape to give that off. Nice. And it's got little holes up on top, I guess, for storing extra tips. At least that's what I've been doing with my other stand. I don't know whether I'll do that with this one or not. Um, so here's, here's the stand that came with the soldering station. And uh, I, I like this one. Hmm. I'm happy. So the other thing that came with it is this little pad here, which is a silicone heat resistant pad. And it looks like it's designed to, that little thing pops out. I'm not going to do it right now. And then that wraps around and tucks through there to hold it in place. So then if I'm soldering directly on something on here, um, I don't have to worry about burning the uh the cutting mat or deforming it or anything that is very cool thank you so much uh my benefactor in germany now and thanks to everybody actually um 
if you want to know what the about the uh, my post office box, it's in my channel about, and it's also on the uh, channel. What is it? Uh, the community tab. I, I've got a, a link to it there as well, and you probably see it on screen right now because I'll edit it in. Thanks for everybody for everything. Comments, questions, as usual. Yeah, this is the real ending for real this time. Really.